by allowing our minds to wander while we're doodling, we're activating different regions of the brain, which can lead to increased understanding and retention of what we've listened to. So doodling is not mindless, it's mindful. Mindful. Welcome to the BDI Create Today podcast. This is a podcast where we uncover and discover the who, what, where, when, why, and how you can be creative or have more creativity. And together, we'll explore the extraordinary impact creativity can have in your life, in heart, mind, body, and soul. And if we haven't met yet, I'm Beth Buffington, a licensed artist, digital illustration instructor, and a creative coach living just outside of the Windy City, Chicago. But mostly, I'm someone who is curious about how creativity can weave its way into nearly everything in our lives. Each week, we are going to look at one or more of the sparkly facets that make up the ever-changing kaleidoscope that is creativity. Welcome to another episode of the BDI Create Today podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to start with a story. When I was growing up, there was this one summer when I was given a book about how to draw cats. And my friends, I loved this book. And during that summer, you could find me everywhere with my how to draw cats book and my sketch pad and my pencils. And you would find me drawing cats. I was drawing in my bedroom, on the couch, on picnic tables, at barbecues. I took my sketch pad and my cat book to friends' houses, and I got them interested in drawing cats with me. It was an obsession. I did it everywhere. And one of the places where I was drawing cats that summer was uh, maybe slightly scandalous, and that was church. With my bestie, Carolyn, I remember sitting in a way back pew or up in the balcony where people couldn't easily see us. And I would covertly draw cats during scripture and the sermon. Shh, it was a scandal. You see, drawing during church, well, most adults frowned on it, even though I wasn't making noise. It seemed to show to grownups back then that I wasn't paying attention or that maybe I didn't care about what was happening during the sacred moments of the service. But does drawing negate the benefits of listening to or caring about what is being said? Is that true? Now, here's what I discovered years later as a professional illustrator. When I'm watching television or I'm listening to a podcast and I'm drawing at the same time, well, I started to realize that I actually retained or understood more of the information I was listening to than if I was just watching television or listening to the podcast and not drawing. And the reverse is true. Some of my best illustrations have been completed while I was listening to a book or a podcast or while I was watching television and drawing in the evenings. How can this be? So that's what we're going to chat about today. Drawing and its superpowers. Today we're going to simplify our focus from drawing so that people don't get nervous about, well, I can't draw. And we're going to take a peek at the very humble and often ridiculed doodle. So my creative friend, I want you to find yourself a pen or a pencil and doodle on anything, a napkin, a scrap of paper, notepad, whatever, and listen along to some pretty amazing information about the benefits of drawing doodles. So listeners, I am in love with another book about creativity, and we're going to talk about this book today. The book is the Doodle Revolution by Dr. Sonny Brown. Now, Dr. Brown begins her book with a quote from Alvin Toffler that should make you stop and think and then think again about how this particular quote could apply to you personally. Anyway, it made me stop and think and think again. So here it is. The quote is, 
The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I think this is a pretty creative way of thinking about learning. To me, this quote is true in so many ways, because learning and unlearning and relearning in order to stay coherent with things like technology, social media, culture, climate, racial and gender equality, et cetera, et cetera. See, I think we need to unlearn things that we've learned and thought were factual and then relearn them so that we can grasp and understand the latest update. Technology and our culture is changing so quickly that we often cannot just lean on our laurels and say, well, that's the way we've always done it. No, we need to be thankful for things we've learned, but realize that what we've learned, well, it's just a step, not a plateau, and that we need to continually climb this stairwell of continual learning and understanding. And so today, we're going to take a toe touch into this incredible book, The Doodle Revolution, and we're going to perhaps unlearn and relearn some things that we might have learned back in the day. Now, the author of this book, The Doodle Revolution, Dr. Sunny Brown, she is both hilarious and deadly serious, which I love so much. Now, she has a letter that she wrote to the reader that's at the beginning of her book, and I want to read just a tiny bit of it to you so that you can catch the flavor for the fun and the epic changes that doodling can provide in your life. Here's what she wrote. This book will matter deeply in both your life and your work. I did not write, she says, this book to entertain myself or even to be honest, to entertain you. I wrote it because every single one of us can make use of what it offers. And I don't mean you can use it like makeup to decorate or frosting to sweeten. I mean, you can use this book like a submarine or a sword. You can use it like an x-ray or deep ocean drill. You can even use it like a hammock on a sunny day. This book is designed, forgive the cliche, to change your life. It will help you expand what is available to you as a weapon against ignorance, a tool against complexity, a meditation in search of insights, and a game in search of discovery. All these possibilities are idling just within reach in the universally known device called the doodle. I thought this was a really great way to start her book, kind of just getting you ready for what is to come. Now we're gonna talk about doodles today in this episode. And I want to rewind a little bit and remember, let's go back to episode one of Create Today with Beth Buffington. And you'll remember that we pondered who is creative. And we talked about that as children, we are all so creative. We're all confident with the crayon, right? And as children, we were confident with our creations as well. Children are not afraid to hold up their drawings and proudly say, look what I just drew. And let me tell you about it. But the majority of adults will tell you, I can't draw. I hear this all the time. And that is because creativity is slowly pressed out of our souls in lieu of literacy and verbal communication. And while these are without debate, super important areas to expand in our brains, it should not be at the expense of creativity. And today, when I say creativity, I'm talking about doodles. So why the bad rep doodles? I thought, well, let's go back to the dictionary and let's look up the definition of the word doodle. And here's what I found. So doodle as a verb is a drawing made absent-mindedly, or to waste time in aimless or foolish activity. Hmm. Doodle as a noun is a design or figure made by idle scribbling. Or, uh, listen to this one, doodle as a noun is a foolish or silly person. 
Now, Wikipedia tells us that the word doodle first appeared in the 17th century to mean a fool or simpleton. And it may derive from the German word doodletopf or doodledop, meaning simpleton or noodle. <laughs> now, the origin of the early 18th century verb to doodle was to swindle or to make a fool of. And then the modern meaning emerged as a term for a politician who was doing nothing in office at the expense of his constituents. And this led to the more generalized verb to doodle, which means to do nothing. Ouch. Oh, poor doodles. What a bad rap. Doodling has often been dismissed as a mindless habit or a sign of inattention from someone who just doesn't care. So no wonder it was frowned upon to draw in church. No wonder I snuck in my sketch pad and drew in the back row. Drawing with no obvious purpose had been labeled as mindless and foolish. And so drawing while important information was being shared well, it just showed inattention, and that led to judgment of the doodler or the drawer as someone who didn't care. So today, we're going to unlearn and then relearn what we've learned about our thoughts on doodles. We're going to reinforce a lot of the things that came from the doodle revolution and its perspective that doodling is actually a powerful tool for boosting creativity, improving focus, and enhancing learning. So seriously, my friend, I want you to grab your favorite pen and pencil and doodle while you listen. You just might remember more of what we're talking about today if you doodle while I talk. So to truly understand the benefits of doodling, let's dig into some scientific data. As mentioned earlier, research has shown that doodling can enhance concentration and retention, especially during activities that require listening to and or the processing of information. So I found an article in Science Daily about a study that was published in the journal Applied Cognitive Psychology where participants who doodled while listening to a boring phone message retained 29% more of the information than those who didn't doodle. This suggests that doodling can serve as a form of active listening that helps us better engage with and then remember what we are listening to. But if science says doodling is good, why does it have such a bad reputation? And like we looked at with the definition, throughout history, doodlers have been unfairly labeled as lazy or inattentive, often facing judgment and criticism for their seemingly mindless scribbles. So when you were little, do you remember yourself or other children who might've been called out during class for doodling instead of taking notes about the subject that the teacher was explaining? Often school doodlers were publicly shamed. Beth, is there something you'd like to share with the class? And then drawing held up for ridicule. As a result, it is not uncommon for doodling to have been smushed and erased out of our creative souls during a time when we might have been fearful of the judgment of our peers or our teachers. So lots of folks don't doodle. And I bet this phrase is even more accurate. Lots of folks don't doodle anymore. But my friend, they should, and we should, and you could. And if you do doodle, doodle with confidence and doodle all the day. See, this is one of those places where we need to consider unlearning something that we've learned. In this case, the thought that doodlers were uncaring and inattentive. And we need to be open to relearning using a new perspective that has been opened to us by science and the book, The Doodle Revolution. I actually think that many schools th today are more open to children finding their best habits for having attention and retention of information. 
Because chats with my daughter who teaches third grade has shown me that she embraces many methods of learning in her classroom and doodling, well, it's just not the culprit that it once was. But for many of us who are adults right now, we were taught to hide our doodles or taught not to doodle. And so let's embrace a bit of unlearning and embrace the freedom of this new knowledge. My friend, run with abandon to your pencil and doodle my friend with confidence. <laughs> now let's take a quick break and listen to a word from our sponsor. And my friend, that would be me. Are you interested in exploring your creativity with Procreate on your iPad? Get my free Kickstart video. It's going to give you a beautiful tour of how to use Procreate to create your own art. You'll get information about brush libraries, layer and layer options, explanations of the tool icons, and so much more. Just go to www.bdi-create.today forward slash kickstart to get my free Procreate Kickstart video. So we've engaged in a new perspective that doodling is far from mindless. It's a natural and instinctive form of expression that can actually enhance cognitive abilities and boost creativity. And dang it, it's fun too. And that's a win-win. So doodling engages the brain's default mode network. We're getting a little sciencey again. And this default mode network, this is responsible for daydreaming and creative thinking in our brain. And by allowing our minds to wander while we're doodling, we're actually activating different regions of the brain and it's making new connections, which can lead to increased insight and understanding and retention of what we've just listened to. So daydreaming is really day thinking. So doodling is not mindless, it's mindful, mindful. And as if this wasn't enough magic, in addition, doodling can serve as a form of visual thinking, which allows us to explore ideas and concepts in a non-linear way. So you might be thinking, um, how the heck can I use visual thinking when I'm just doodling hearts on my notepad, Beth? Ah, valid point. So, you know, I love a good list. So here is a list of examples for how visual thinking can come from your doodles daily. Number one, brainstorming. Doodling can serve as a great brainstorming tool, and it's going to help you generate ideas in an intuitive, nonlinear way. So drawing doodles instead of just writing a brainstorm list with words, this is going to make it easier to explore new concepts through the simple images that you doodle in your visual thinking. And visual thinking, by the way, is just a fancy way of saying talking with simple pictures. Um, think Pictionary, okay? Number two, problem solving. Doodling can help us approach problems from different angles and then come up with innovative solutions by engaging the brain's default mode network which we now know is stimulating our creative thinking and helping us find those out of the box solutions. So quick and simple illustrations help us with that non-linear thinking. Number three, inspiration. Doodling can spark inspiration and ignite our imagination. And this can lead to breakthroughs and new insights to future creative projects. I mean, how many times have new ideas popped up from sketches on a napkin? This often happens when you are just casually allowing your pen or your pencil to flow with no preconceived notion or idea of what you are creating. And this allows the brain to remap ideas and connect random ideas together, often creating innovative and novel ideas. And because there's no good or bad doodles, your mind is free to wander. So yay visual thinking on a napkin. And visual thinking on a napkin can also be additionally enhanced by a really nice martini. Number four, relaxation. 
Doodling can be a form of relaxation and stress relief. This will allow us to unwind and recharge our creative batteries. It's a visual way of releasing stress and mindfully calming our brain through simple and often repetitive shapes and strokes. And this can be done with pens and pencils or paint. It's like visual meditation using pen and paper instead of a yoga mat. Now you might be thinking, okay, I get it, Beth. Doodling is creatively good for me in heart, mind, body, and soul. But how do I incorporate doodling to make this goodness happen in my life? So let's take the benefits of doodling that we've explored and consider how to start or revive this lost habit in your life. So I've doodled a little list for you, my friend. Let me verbally share my doodles. And here are a few tips to get you started doodling daily. Number one, carry a sketchbook and a pen or a pencil with you at all times. Wherever you go, take along a little sketchbook or a notebook and a pen or a pencil so you can doodle whenever. Don't wait for inspiration to strike, just doodle and see where your line work takes you. You might be surprised at what you remember, what inspires you, what problems you solve, or what level of stress you are able to release. Or you might just have a really strange face with hearts for eyes. Who knows what you're going to make? Who knows? Remember, there are no good or bad doodles, and they don't all have to have deep meaning. Some of them can not just be a face with hearts for eyes. <laughs> just get in the habit of letting yourself doodle. Number two, be brave and doodle in front of others. Now, if you only doodle when other people can't see you, you're not going to doodle very much or very often. So I don't know, be like me with my cat book that summer long ago and doodle everywhere. Don't be afraid to doodle in front of people and encourage people to doodle with you. So be brave and doodle in church or in that next meeting while you're at work. I dare you to doodle. Number three, experiment with materials. Try doodling with different pens, pencils, markers. Doodle with multicolor pens. Change up your colors as you go and play with paper. Try to discover what works best for you and what might spark your creativity. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. See where your doodle ideas lead you. You might find your doodles lead to some big ideas or become doodle collections or even an eventual masterpiece. And let me know. Number four, get the book, The Doodle Revolution. I highly recommend this book. I'll give a link to it in the show notes and enjoy and get ready to have your life changed. Now, whether you're an artist listening to me in your studio or you're someone who crochets or bakes fabulous pies or you're an accountant who knows your number, think about your doodling. When was the last time you doodled? Is it time to ramp it up, my friend? Doodling is a simple yet powerful way to tap into your creativity and unleash your imagination. What have you doodled during our chat today? Now, if you're not doodling because you're driving or walking the dog or showering or you're emptying the dishwasher, that's a good reason not to have a pen in your hand. But find time today, grab a pen and dabble in some doodles. Who knows what amazing inspirations you'll think up, problems you'll solve, brainstorms you'll whip up, or new ideas that spring to life. Now, I hope you've enjoyed exploring the surprising benefits of doodling with me today. Until next time, there's magic in every doodle. So doodle daily. And until we meet again, stay creative, my friend. Oh, here's one more note from our sponsor. And <laughs> that's still me. I have an exciting invitation for you. Now here in Chicagoland, we are slogging our way through April's wintry mix. But this chilly spring weather, well, it just gives us time to plan what to create this summer. And here's an idea for you. Come 
come create today with me at the all-inclusive Artist Rising Retreat Center in the beautiful Connecticut River Valley Inn. Imagine sun-filled summer days where all you need to do is relax and be creative. The dates are July 28th through August 1st. And we're going to draw flowers and then I'm going to show you how to make your beautiful flowers into zenfully gorgeous flower mandalas all in procreate it's easy and i promise you you can do this whether you're a seasoned procreate professional or you're a newbie to this lovely drawing program so come and bring a friend or two or three and meet me in connecticut this summer for some lovely sun-filled days and we'll create today together for registration and to gather more information, just go to www.artistsrising.net forward slash Beth-Buffington-2024 or make it easy and just go to the show notes for the link. You can also find the information on my Instagram page. Just search for Beth Buffington. My friend, I cannot wait to create today with you this summer.